Good morning, everyone. Lovely to see you in worship this Sunday morning. Any visitors are very welcome with us as you, as you join with us here in Scarva Street. Uh, friends, we continue our studies in the Gospel of John. We are at the end of chapter 16, uh, where Jesus speaks of the reality of God's people under pressure, but yet the promise that he is with them and the fullness of his grace to be upon them. So I trust there'll be challenge, but there'll also be encouragement as we come <clears throat> to God's word together this morning. Lovely to welcome boys and girls into church as well. Our Sunday school starts today. We're going to have a new name for Sunday school, uh, going to be called Kingdom Kids. So uh, it's on Sunday school on the order this morning, but it'll just be a wee change uh, for next week. So you can tell people you belong to Kingdom Kids. And if they say, what's that? You say, well, it meets in Scarborough Street on Sunday morning at 11. And you can tell them about that. Uh, and you can invite your friends if they'd like to come uh, to church and to Sunday school. One or two announcements for us. Uh, anyone who wishes to come to the Lord's table for the first time, please do contact me uh, and I'll arrange to meet with you. Uh, Girls Brigade is on Tuesday for all sections uh, starting. Uh, prayer meeting is on Wednesday at 7.30 in the Moor Room. Mums and Tots uh, has recommenced and continues Thursday 10 o'clock to 12 noon. Uh, really lively Thursday morning to start, so that was great. Uh, bowling club meets Thursday evening. Um, it's an open night and that's at 7.30. So if you'd like to come along just to throw a few bowls, uh, just for the fun of it. Uh, you don't have to join, but new members are very, very welcome. If you want to come along, just have an evening and get the feel of it. Please do, do come along. That's Thursday, 7.30. Breakfast Bible class continues on Sunday mornings at 11 or 10 o'clock, starting in the Irvine Hall. And Sunday school, which will be Kingdom Kids, will meet from 11 o'clock in, in church each Sunday. Committee meeting is on Monday the 16th of September in the Moor Room at 7.30 and our Boys Brigade have their registration on Friday the 20th of September. We have our first evening invite service on the 22nd of September at 6.30. Uh, it takes the form of a, a question answer evening where invited ministers will be able to answer your questions, questions you submit as a congregation. There's a box in the porch uh, just with questions on it. So please, if you have a question you'd like uh, some of our local ministers to answer, uh, please put that in the box. We have uh, two past assistants, Brian Col Colvin and Seamus Burke coming. We also have Adrian Moffat from Donna Cloney and Nigel Kane from Macarali. So those are the four men who will be here to answer your questions. Now, what would those questions be? The problem of evil? Um, how do we respond after COVID? Whatever it may be, any questions at all or questions about the faith, uh, maybe a question in the Bible that you, you're just not sure what that verse means, um, put those uh, in the box and if we can't answer them all in the evening, all of them will be answered uh, in due course in some other form. Uh, but we want all your questions to be answered. Uh, so please do uh, put those in the box. Next Sunday morning, we have a retiring offering for the Wings Appeal for the RAF Association. So please remember that to, uh, next Sunday morning. Um, Christian Institute have a, a meeting in Belfast in the Stormont Hotel on Thursday the 19th of September, uh, if you're free. It's dealing with uh, conversion therapy. You'll have some idea of what this is about. Um, there is a, a, a press uh, upon 
Christian values in our world. We know that there's a press upon sharing the faith uh, and evangelism. Uh, activists want a law against conversion therapy, and that's really to impose LGBT ideology on preaching, prayer and pastoral work, and even parent-child conversations. MLAs have pledged to bring a bill uh, on this matter to, at Stormont. Politicians at Westminster and in the Scottish Parliament are also bringing forward similar laws. So <clears throat> we want folk to pray, and if you want to be informed, to go along for that evening meeting. The Christian Institute has launched uh, <clears throat> the Let Us Pray campaign to protect the ordinary work of churches from a conversion therapy law. It should be not be illegal for Christians to share the Bible's teaching about sexual ethics or to pray for their friends. Uh, and they'll update us on information that they have. So if you'd like to go along, it's Thursday the 19th of September in the Stormont Hotel, and that's from 7.30 to 9 o'clock. If some maybe want to go down, you maybe can come together and uh, take a car. Uh, <clears throat> men's, our own men's fellowship have our golf uh, morning on Thursday the 26th of September at 11 o'clock in Porta Down. There's a sheet in the porch. Um, and also Ma uh, Banside Men's Club have their meeting uh, 10 o'clock on Tuesday in the Minor Hall. Tommy McClymans is speaking on the history of C. Patrick. I think these are uh, all the announcements at present. Friends, we come to sing and we stand as we sing Light of the World. <laughs>
friends, we come to bow in prayer. Let us pray. Father, we bless you that in your love and mercy you sent your Son into the world. We bless you that he is this world's light. We bless you that he is altogether lovely and altogether worthy. Lord, help us by the Holy Spirit to worship you aright this morning pray that you'll minister to our minds, that we will think great thoughts about you, things we know from the scriptures, and those things we've experienced in life at your hand. Lord, help us to open up our hearts in thanksgiving. We pray, O oh, oh God, that by your Spirit, you will enable us to worship together, that we'll have a great sense of fellowship and togetherness in the gospel. Lord, we prize you, our God, and we prize one another in the faith. Let our fellowship be rich today. O oh Lord, as we come in prayer, you teach us to remember our sins things that we have failed to do that we should have done, the things that we have said and done and thought and purpose that are contrary to your goodwill for us. Lord, help us not only to confess our sins, but grant us that inner strength that we might deal with temptations, that we might live in ways that honor you and please you. So Lord, be pleased to forgive our sins and strengthen us that we might live well for Jesus. Father, in all our prayers, we come in love, we come in your grace, we come with thankful hearts. And as we pray, we trust that in mercy, you will bless us richly, that we in turn might bless our God. Hear our prayer for Jesus' sake. Amen. If the boys and girls will come up, we'll have your story, and then uh, we'll have a song, and then you'll be able to slip out to Sunday school. Now, it's really good to see you. I've missed you over the summertime with summer break and summer holidays, and we're now back to school, yep. And has everyone got a new teacher? Yeah. Have you? Is the new teacher good? Not all the time, no. <laughs> See, teachers, you know, mm, now, teachers are brilliant, aren't they? They do a lot for us, and they help us to learn. Now, I want... This year, Sunday school is going to be a bit different because it's going to be called Kingdom Kids. Okay, so you have to remember that. So when you hear Kingdom Kids, you'll know what it is. And we're going to do the, um, the Jesus Bible storybook throughout the year, which means that when you go into Sunday school, sorry, Kingdom Kids, I have to keep remembering. As you go into Kingdom Kids, you're going to have a little video each week and then you're going to be learning a little bit about that. Now, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, the focus is always on Jesus. And so no matter where you are, there's something to learn about Jesus. And that's what you'll be learning in Kingdom Kids this year. Now, yesterday, I was in a very dark place. 
I was. But I wasn't frightened. And there were other people there with me. Because down in the cellar, over in the church hall, that old store, it's all crusty and crumbly. And we were in the GB store. And we were raiding out the girls' brigade store. So there were some officers, and I went down to give them a hand. And we had one wee boy helping too. So, and we found all sorts of amazing things. We found some horses. They weren't real horses, but you had to put them between your legs and you could ride along. You know, they were each sort of toy horses, which they used for a display long ago. And we found hoops, and we found all sorts of different things. And now, I'll tell you a wheat story. This has nothing to do with church. But when I was a young officer in the BB, we went on camp. And there were some uh, lady officers who helped out with the anchor boys and the juniors. And the boys played a trick on them. Because we were in, in a big hall, and the lady officers were in a wee caravan outside. So you can picture it. And we all had our sleeping bags. And one night, the boys got very quiet, settling down to go to sleep. And they usually didn't do that. And we wondered, where, what on earth was happening? And then we heard a large scream from the caravan beside. And what had happened was, the boys had bought a wee rubber rat. And they put the wee rubber rat in the sleeping bag of one of the girls. And when the girl pulled the cover of the, the sleeping bag back, the wee rubber tail on the rat sprang up and she thought it was a real rat. Now, I know some of the officers and they know who they are. When we were in this little dark cellar uh, yesterday, they were worried about seeing some furry little thing running about but thankfully there was nothing. Now, in there, there was a wonderful, um, it, it was a, a wagon, Molly Malone's wagon with her cockles and muscles, but none were alive, alive all. None of them were alive. So we got it all cleared up, but what I wanted really to say to you was, we're going to have discovery after discovery in, king, in, in Kingdom Kids this year, just as we had discovery after discovery down in the cellar, thinking of all the old things that the girls' brigade had done over the years. And we got it all cleared out and ready for another year. So we're going to have a wee prayer, and I'm gonna, we're gonna, then we're going to have a wee song. Now, the song is the Ancient of Days, and I just want you to try to think about it. It's quite an adulty song, but I want you to try to think about the words, and then you can slip out to, we'll call it the Kingdom Kids today. Let's have a wee prayer. Father, we thank you for all our kingdom kids, teachers and helpers, those who will help us throughout the year to learn something more about Jesus. We thank you for all our boys and girls. They're so precious to us. We pray, Lord, that you'll bless them and encourage them throughout this year. For Jesus' sake, amen. Now, you have to stay. We're going to move over to this way and the girls are going to come up and they're going to lead us all in a song. So, all right, you can, you can sit and watch up the screen, and then after this, you can sit right here.
as the boys and girls leave, we'll be taking up the offering as uh, the girls and the praise group will lead us um, in a piece entitled Jesus All for Jesus. Now, because we're having sort of three songs in the beginning of the service, so they're not up and down all the time, uh, the format's a wee bit changed, but you can follow it on the order. Uh, during this, as the girls sing and the group plays, our offering is taken up. As the, the collectors bring up the offering, please just leave it and then return to your seats because we'll be continuing in our praise. So our offering will be received. And as the girls will sing, Jesus, all for Jesus. <laughs> Friends, we join in prayer. Let us pray. Father, you are so good to us, giving us gift upon gift, day by day. We are so privileged and glad to bring gifts to you today. Take what we bring and use for the glory of Jesus. Take what we bring and use to help relieve others in their need. And as we bring our gifts, Make us truly grateful and thankful for all your love. Hear our prayer for Jesus' sake. Amen. Friends, again, we stand to sing together. We sing, it was finished upon that cross. Thank you. 
friends, e each week uh, we have prayer requests coming up from uh, assemblies buildings just so it as a, a, a nationwide denomination we can pray on things together for the wider work. We're asked to remember the, the work in Nepal. Nepal, as you know, is uh, it's a Hindu kingdom. Uh, technically in Nepal, it's illegal to evangelize, to encourage anyone to change their faith. Uh, but yet there are workers there with the United Mission to Nepal uh, many of them working in either agriculture or working in, in the sciences and working in hospitals. Uh, and so their contribution is very valued by uh, the government in Nepal. And so there's a certain leniency. And missionaries there doing their secular work have opportunity to share their faith. We want to pray for this continued uh, freedom and uh, this continued work. Also to remember the country of Latvia. As you know, Latvia is just on the, the border of Russia. It's a small country with little defense and a, a country which is under constant pressure with the, the present situation with Russia and Ukraine. We're asked to pray for the Baltic Reform Theological Seminary. And for Mr. Artis uh, Clemens, he's director um, as he tries to develop that work and to pray for the students, some who are there uh, at the seminary and others who are studying online, that God might raise up those who will have not only knowledge but strength and confidence to promote the gospel throughout Latvia. We come to God with these and other prayers. Let us pray. Father, we bless you that this world belongs to you. That what we have, we are simply stewards of these things. We thank you that your kingdom is a kingdom that is growing and a kingdom that will never end. So, Lord, what you purpose for us is eternally wonderful. And, Lord, we pray for the world in which we live. And we pray for people who have no real thought of God or understanding of him. And as we do that, Lord, we are so conscious of your grace to us. That in Jesus we have an eternal hope. We have the knowledge of your presence. We have a word to guide us. We have a congregation to fellowship with. Lord, we are so blessed. We think of those who are outside your kingdom and those who don't know you. We pray for Nepal which has Hindu temples more than shops throughout the country. We pray, O oh Lord, you'll be with the United Mission to Nepal. Grant them continued freedom to share their faith, to speak the gospel, to love those round about them, to encourage them in things that truly matter. And Lord, be pleased to grow your church there. We think too of the country of Latvia. We remember Artis Clemens as he directs the theological seminary there. We pray for students who study in person and online. And amidst all the lack of resources, amidst the concern of pressures from outside, we pray, Lord, that you'll strengthen the team pray that many will be equipped to be useful ministers of the gospel. We pray, Lord, for that breath of your spirit as your word is spoken, that new life will be found in the hearts of many people. 
Lord, again, we pray for the world which is so troubled. We pray for peace in areas where there is war. Our focus so often is on Israel and Gaza, the ongoing conflict there, concerns in the wider region, the long-standing war between Russia and Ukraine. We pray, O oh God, that all oppressors will be pegged back. We pray for freedom and sovereignty of nations. Lord, in all these situations, we know that you are active by your spirit, bringing new life to the souls of men and women and children. And so we pray for the proclamation of the gospel in all these places and throughout your world, that names will be continually written in the book of life, even in glory. Lord, we think of our own situation here in Scarborough Street and Banbridge. We remember our own members who are ill, those who have undergone operations and are recovering, those in long-term care, those who find it difficult just at home to get about. We pray for families with children starting back to school. We pray that you'll help them to readapt to this pray for their education, for teachers, for class assistants, for ancillary staff. We pray for the protection of our young people, not only going about, but in their minds and hearts by your spirit. Lord, we remember one another in worship today. And as we come to your word, we pray that you will be our teacher you'll help us to understand that we might meet the challenges in life with faith and fortitude, that we will have great joy deep in the soul as we think of our Jesus. Lord, hear our prayer for his name's sake. Amen. Friends, we find our reading in John chapter 16 and reading from verse uh, 31 uh, to the end. As you know, we spent quite a, a number of months, uh, years in John's gospel from chapter 5 uh, coming through uh, to chapter 16 now. And we have a a teaching here from Jesus about the, the, the church, God's people being oppressed, being under pressure, but yet they have his peace. So I hope there's something of challenge here for us uh, as well as comfort. Jesus says to his disciples, verse 31, you believe at last, Jesus answered, but a time is coming and has come when you will be scattered each to his own home. You will leave me all alone. Yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Ending there at verse 33, we thank God for his truth. The disciples are, have professed their faith, but yet it's something that in, in this instance will be short-lived uh, because their faith is not that well grounded and in a sense, fear will overwhelm their commitment. And so I suppose there's an immediate challenge for us. We are called to know what we believe. We are called to believe the rudiments of the gospel. 
We are called to have those deep in our hearts, a belief in God, in his son, Jesus, in the Holy Spirit, a belief that we are sinners and we need to be forgiven, a belief that Jesus lived our life and died our death, a belief that in rising again from the dead, he declared his victory. The gospel so beautifully free and equaling that we each put our faith in this same Jesus. And he loves us as if there were but one to love. Each equally precious, each equally important, each equally saved by the blood of the Lamb. And we need to constantly remind ourselves of these things because there is the temptation to fall away. Now, Jesus speaks about their faith, yes, but he says, very soon your faith will evaporate and you'll leave me alone. This is what Jesus says. A time is coming. It has come. It's right now. You will be scattered each to his own home and you will leave me all alone. Very soon after praying with them, which is chapter 17, they leave and take the short journey across the Kidron Valley and up onto the Mount of Olives. And there Jesus will be betrayed. He'll be taken to Caiaphas. After Caiaphas, taken to Pilate. There he'll be interrogated again. In the morning he'll be beaten, taken to Golgotha and crucified. He says that the disciples will be scattered and that's what happened. They fled from the garden of Gethsemane. They fled back to Bethany. Peter, he followed along at a distance, but he was still separated from Jesus. And in Luke chapter 23, where we read about the two on the way back to Emmaus, they were going with their faces downcast. They were confused. They were disappointed. They were frightened. Jesus says, look, you'll be scattered. You'll be confused. And you'll be isolated, each one to his own home, each one to his own, as it were, past world, the world that they used to have before they met him. Scattered, confused, isolated. Now there's the danger today that Christians can have that same experience. We can be scattered we can be confused. We can feel isolated. This wasn't just for the disciples of Jesus' day. We can feel and know the same thing. Now, God purposed to take Adam's fallen race of which we are a part and, and to bring into being a new humanity in Jesus, a humanity that will not fail, a humanity that will endure for eternity. But having brought people together in faith by the power of the Spirit, there is that danger that we can be scattered, that we can be confused, that we can become isolated. Christians can be scattered today at times of persecution and times of war. Christians can be scattered in times of what we call schism, where there are, are disagreements in churches and church fellowships. Christians can be scattered even in things like COVID, where people who once used to gather in a place of worship don't gather anymore. The devil has different ways of disrupting God's people in their life and in their worship and their witness. 
Christians can be confused too. Aren't there many verses in the scriptures we'll open up and we'll read and we'll wonder what on earth they mean? In the Old Testament, it says an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. In other words, uh, there's a, 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 an effect of sin and a judgment on sin. And yet in the New Testament, Jesus says, it has been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I tell you, turn the other cheek. Is that a contradiction? No. In the Old Testament, it was a theocracy. The church and the state were together. They had to act in justice as well as mercy. In the New Testament, the church and the state are distinct. And so the state has a responsibility of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth to bring judgment upon the perpetrator but God's people are free from that responsibility. And we have a, a different way of working, a call to forgive, a call to be different in a society that is so warped and twisted and brutal and misguided and troubled that we might be a light to the nation. Sometimes we're confused when we have a sadness or we lose a loved one or we get bad news from the doctor. Whatever the trouble is, we can be confused and ask the question, why, Lord? Why these things? We're scattered. We're confused. Can't we feel isolated too? We can feel alone. Maybe things that we have that we feel we can't share with anyone else. And sometimes we sort of go into our own little shell. We're with people, but we're alone. I remember uh, when I was in New York one time with the Queen's Hockey Tour we spent some time in Canada and some time in uh, Pennsylvania. We stayed in New York for uh, a couple of nights. And I remember walking down Fifth Avenue uh, with a, a, a hockey friend. We were going down. And I remember I, I caught someone's eye. Now, if you've ever done this in a, in a big city, in somewhere like America, you'll know this experience. I caught someone's eye. And you don't do that uh, on Fifth Avenue. You're walking and you're alone. No one relates to you. Um, and because I caught eyes with someone uh, uh, and just they caught eyes with me because of that and the person followed me until he was about maybe five paces beyond me before he turned because people don't engage. Um, it's a place where people maybe want to get something from you or, or, or uh, whatever. It's a very sort of, you're, you're among people, but you're completely isolated. And sometimes in the Christian life, we can feel that way. Well, that's how the disciples felt. They were scattered. They were confused. We thought this was the hope of Israel, but he's crucified. And they were isolated. They were going to be going back to their own way before they had met Jesus. We can have the same sorts of experience. But of course, Jesus is the exact opposite of this. While the disciples were scattered, Jesus was, in a sense, together. He was arrested, told Peter, put down your sword. This is what's going to happen. This is in God's plan. I'm in control. Brought before Caiaphas. They couldn't find anything wrong with him, no matter uh, what witness they brought. And of course, the Jewish authorities had nothing to do with the death of Jesus. They couldn't enact it. They hadn't the power. So they had to send him to Pilate. 
Pilate again washed his hands. I see nothing wrong with this man. Let me release Barabbas instead. No, we want Jesus. Pilate's wife comes and says, I've had bad dreams because of this. Don't touch this man. Jesus is in complete control. Even on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. They were scattered, but he was together. And after his resurrection, he would be the magnet that would draw them together as he drew them to himself. He's the exact opposite. As they were confused, he was in complete control. He didn't have to defend himself before Caiaphas or Pilate. The only thing he said was when he was asked, are you the son of God? He said, it is as you say. Confident, clear, no confusion in his mind or heart. Isolated? Well, he says here, I'm not alone. The father is with me. And we see that at the beginning of his crucifixion where he says, Father, forgive them. At the end of his crucifixion when he says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. It's only in that middle, those three R's, when the Father turned from him and he bore the sin of a world in his own soul. He didn't speak to his Father, but cries out in pain, My God, my God, why? you forsaken me but he's not isolated apart from those three hours when he was doing the work that we could not do for ourselves to pay for our sin isn't it good that God is so gracious the disciples have professed their belief but very soon they're going to run away going to be confused and questioning and they're going to be isolated and ineffective we're a bit like that aren't we aren't we easily scattered and confused don't we draw into our own shell but the grace of God is such that he he loves people like that people like us we are not strong we are not great we are not wise we want to love Jesus. We want to follow him. And his grace is such that he envelops us. He says here to the disciples, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you'll have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. He says, yes, you'll have plenty of things to trouble you. But I've come to give you peace. The peace that was announced when Jesus was born by the angels. Peace on earth to those on whom his favor rests. And the peace he spoke to the disciples. In John 14 verse 27, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. But what is peace? Some dictionary definitions give peace as the absence of war or conflict. But this peace is something very, very different, very, very special. It comes from a person having a faith and a confidence in God that God will be with them despite the circumstance. That's what this peace is. It's not an absence of trouble because Jesus says in this very verse, you will have trouble on earth. I'm not going to take those troubles away. I might lessen some of them, but I will help you through them. No, the peace is not the absence of trouble. The peace is a faith and a contentment in heart that no matter what happens, 
we know that God is with us and God will be our strength. Now this peace has two conditions that we find here. The first condition is in that little phrase, in me. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace in Jesus. In other words, it's for the person with, with faith. Now you might think, well, I want to have faith in Jesus, or, I, or I, I have faith in Jesus. But I feel my faith is very weak. That's not really our concern. In fact, if we feel our faith is weak, it's probably stronger than the person who feels their faith is very strong and robust. Because when we sense our faith is weak, then we have that inbuilt desire to depend upon God more. It's not how strong or weak our faith is, it's what our faith's in, the person our faith is in. Imagine someone says, well, I have strong faith. I have great belief in myself. We hear that in this world a lot today. That's not terribly confident, is it? But if someone says, I feel my faith is so weak, but I'm trusting the Lord Jesus, that's something of great strength. Because he will not disappoint his people. He will never let us die. So don't let the devil say to you, oh, your faith's weak. You need to worry about a lot of things. Just say, my faith is in Jesus. I want it to be strong. But whether it's strong or weak, he will keep. It's the great leveler of the gospel. It's not to the wise or the knowledgeable or the clever or the rich or, or the respected or the mighty. It's to everyone. A personal faith from your heart, from my heart to Jesus. That's the first thing. The second condition is also found in this verse. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. Now, what are these things? Well, he's been with them in the upper room from chapter 13 to what it will be 17. And Jesus has been telling them things. What's he been telling them? Beginning of chapter 13, verse 1, we learn that, that he loved them. And he washed their feet. Now the washing of the feet was making their feet clean. The concept of being cleansed, being forgiven. And Jesus speaks that forgiveness to them. I have made you clean. And he says someone who's had a bath only needs to wash his feet. In other words, you've been off a dusty road, your feet's dirty, the rest of you's clean. He makes his people clean and he just keeps cleansing them. When we get our feet dirty, he keeps cleansing us. Speaks of forgiveness. He wants us to know that. Your faith is in me, says Jesus. Well, I have made you clean. I've loved you. I'll keep you. In John 14, verses 2 and 3, in my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. He speaks of heaven. He wants us to know these things. These are the things I've spoken to you, he says. Have your faith in me. I've loved you. I've washed you. I have a home in heaven ready for you. He speaks about the Holy Spirit. In John 14, verses 16 and 17, the, the comfort who will come to be with them. I won't leave you alone. I will dwell within you by my spirit. 
I want you to know that, says Jesus. John 14, verse 12, you will do greater things than I have been doing. He has purpose for us, work for us to do, lives to live that count and make a difference, great things accomplished by the Spirit who dwells within God's people. In John 14, verse 13, he speaks about that answer of prayer. Ask whatever you want in my name and I will do it. All in accordance with my will, I will bring to bear in the answering of your prayer. And here, he says, I have overcome the world. Life, death, resurrection, glory. He is all in all. So Jesus says, I have peace for you. And you have this peace with a simple yet genuine faith in me. And I want you to reflect on the things I've told you. I've loved you. I've washed you clean. I've a heaven for you. The Holy Spirit will dwell within you. The work you do will prosper at my hand. You'll accomplish things for me. I will answer your prayers. And you're on the victory side. You can never be defeated because I have overcome the world. God's people are under pressure. Sometimes we're scattered. Sometimes we're confused. Sometimes we feel isolated. But we know that these things don't affect Jesus. He is the one who brings us back. He lifts our confusion. He makes us experience what it is to be part of his family. He says, I want you to have peace. And you have that peace by a simple yet genuine faith in me. And as you remember the things I've spoken to you, under pressure, but safe, God's people in God's work. Let's pray. Father, we bless you for the wonderful words that Jesus speaks words that are greater than we can understand and yet we marvel at how those words touch our minds and hearts and deep within us. Be pleased, Lord, that if anyone in worship today is feeling under pressure, maybe scattered, confused, isolated, Lord, let our eyes turn to Jesus and let us experience his peace, faith in our hearts and remembering the great things he has done for us. Lord, may each of us leave this place with a lighter step than we had when we entered because we've met with you, O God, and you've done us good. Hear our prayer for Jesus' sake. Amen. Friends, our closing praise there is a higher throne.
grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.